Hi, I'm Dennis Saylor. The video you're about to see was created over 20 years ago, but we still get a lot of questions on our older machines, so we're making it available online. Hello, I'm Dennis Saylor with Dixie and Arco, and we'd like to thank you for purchasing the glass front vendor. I'll be your guide as we go through this video. The purpose of this video production is to walk you through all the programming features of the glass front vendor. So let's get started. In this video, we'll be discussing four button programming for the Coca-Cola vending machine. When you receive the vending machine, it'll be scrolling a message very similar to what we have going across this one, saying ice cold Coca-Cola, and then displaying a vend price of $99.95, which is the factory default. Four button programming utilizes the keypad to go through the, the programming. Button one, two, three, and four, each having their own function. Button one is your exit and abort key. Button two will scroll you forward through the menu. Button three will scroll you backwards through the menu. And button four is your save, enter, and clear key. Now to access the programming, open the service door and press the blue service mode button that's on the universal controller. It's located on the wall of the cabinet. Once you've done that, you should be in the programming. The rest of the programming can be accomplished from the outside of the machine using the keypad. First prompt that comes up is error code. This is the error routine listing. Enter into that with button number four, and it will come up with the list of errors as they are uh, programmed to display as it sees them. We're coming up as a changer error. It's beyond the scope of this video to demonstrate all the potential error codes that, that could be displayed uh, without actually having those problems that you know, can't come up. However, we have simulated some problems and that's why you'll see some of these come up just for demonstration purposes. Changer error comes up, we enter into that again to take it into a step further of the, the routine and it says COIN-COM, which is the coin mech communication, saying there's a communication error. Now, I've accomplished this by unplugging the MDB cord that comes over to the uh, the uh, coin mech and bill validator. So to clear any error codes out, you'll hold button number four and the word none will come up. Press button number one and it'll take me in as a bill validator error. Again, button number four, it's the communication error. Holding button number four again, after taking care of the problem, you know, you'll erase these codes by holding button number four. The word none comes up, press button number one again, and the next error code shows is refrigeration and it's giving me a too hot. Too hot's going to come up. You're going to have that anytime you have above 40 degrees in the vending machine. It's a preset program which basically is three degrees above the upper limit and uh, that equates to a 40 degree temperature uh, reading. Once it gets below 40 degrees, that temperature code error will go away because it'd be futile to try to just uh, clear it out, go to none. It's going to keep coming back as a refrigeration error doing too hot again. Try to scroll forward and, and uh, those are the error codes that came up. So uh, once again, once you go into it, you'll enter into the, uh, the prompt of error. It will list any given errors that do exist on the vending machine and it does bank these in there. So if you don't clear them out, it keeps them and it's the uh, oldest one in there is the first one that comes up on the display. So you want to make sure that you uh, clear them out and that's just done by, by holding button number four in until the word none comes up. Pressing button number one will take you back to the beginning of the error codes. For a complete list of error codes, there uh, on the back wall, the card that's in the vending machine in the service area has a list of all the various error codes. And uh, that'll take you into that routine and give you self-explanatory on those. Coin payout mode. Coin payout is just that we utilize the machine's controller to pay out the coins in the coin mech through the tubes instead of using the buttons that are on the coin mech themselves. Getting into it by pressing button number four, it'll display, and then you can use button two or button three to scroll backwards and forward to the particular coins that you want to dispense, then press button number four to actually dispense it. Doing it this way, it actually registers through the electronic programming in the memory of the vending machine so they can have cash accountability. Tube fill mode is your next function by pressing button number two to move forward. Tube fill comes up. Enter into this. This is the function that you use to actually load the tubes in the, the tubes that are in the coin mech themselves, uh, your nickel, dime, and quarters, so that you can have your float level in there. As opposed to 
going into the back side of the coin mech and, and through the slots, you actually utilize the tube fill mode again for cash accountability. All of the coins coming in are registered into the controller. Once you enter in zero display, just start either through the coin slot on the front of the machine or the top of the acceptor on the coin mech and start introducing the coins. This is only necessary on the initial load of the vending machine. Button one to get out of that, button two to move on to the next mode, which is test mode. Now at the end of this programming section, we're actually going to go into the test mode and troubleshooting in depth more. So we're going to move on from here and come back to that towards the end. The next function that comes up, pressing button number two to move forward, is password. This is the Coke password routine. Coke's password is 4231. So to enter that in, you press four till the display goes blank, then two, three, one, four to enter and it comes up cash. That'll take you into the cash routine of the vending machine. What this does, it gives you cash readings. Enter into button number four, and it will display any cash. This is a historical number. Any cash that's been introduced into this machine while this control board has been in operation. If there's a control board error, then that number will go away and start over with a new number, with a new controller. But these are historical numbers. Now you can actually enter you know, and scroll through to card, or by column, you can have it by column numbers and scroll to the individual columns and it will give you the, the cash counting on that particular column. Now these numbers by column are resettable and we'll get into how to reset that a little bit later. Button one to go back to cash and button number two to take you to sales. Now sales is how many vends have occurred in this vending machine. It operates just like cash. Enter into it the first number that comes up is historical, it's non-resettable, it's for the life of that control board. You can also get in then by scrolling to the individual columns and enter into it and it will display the, how many vends have occurred on that particular column. This number is resettable. Button one to get out of that, but two to move forward. Price feature, this is where you set the price, the price setting routine. Now when the machine comes to use from the factory, it's set on single price and you'll have SNG price for single price. I can't scroll to any particular columns. This will set the machine all 45 selections on one VIN price. Enter into it using button four and then you can use buttons two or three to scroll through the menu, or through the, the numbers and they'll climb in five cent increments to whatever VIN price you want. Once you reach the VIN price that you want, lock it in using button number four. Again, this is single price mode only. If you are on multi-price mode, it'll come up with all selections. It gives you the capability of setting all 45 selections at one VIN price. So we enter into that, adjust it using buttons two or three, it will climb in five cent increments. Locking it in, now I've set all 45 selections at one dollar. Now realistically with this vending machine you're going to be utilizing it in multi-price mode and there will be a dominant VIN price with the vending machine because three of the five trays perhaps will sell for one dollar. Uh, tray D will sell for uh, a different VIN price and tray E maybe you know a, a different VIN price on it. So let's go into that. So we have all, uh, all five trays set at, uh, at one dollar now we use button two, we can scroll to tray D with the D displayed, press button number four. Now what it's asking is all selections on tray D. So we're going to enter into that and we're going to change that price to 85 cents. Enter that in. Then pressing button number two, I can scroll to an individual selection on tray D, take D6, and I'm actually going to have it at 90 cents. So what I've done is three different settings of the prices on this. All selections when you first enter into it will give you all 45 selections. Then locking that price in, you scroll to uh, an individual tray. And then once you've done, you know, enter that, it'll give you all selections or individual selections on that tray that you can set the prices on. So you have three different methods to give you some flexibility. Once you've got all of your prices setting, press button number one and it takes you back to the prompt of price. This next function is the test mode. This is where you can go in and test the different components of the vending machine to make sure they're operating properly. Enter in by pressing button number four. The first thing that comes up is test vend. Now you enter into that and you can scroll to a particular selection that you want to test vend. 
and uh, the elevator then when I activate this the elevator will go up it'll fire that gate and then it'll come down and go through a normal test bin mode it won't do it with the door open so I'm going to hold this door switch in to get it to do it Once what it has done, it has gone in, it fires the elevator, the elevator goes to the gate, the gate fires, the conveyor runs, the elevator comes down to the vending area, it tries to go through a dispensing mode, and then it goes home after it detects a, a package is vended. Exit out of that, you can do a test select. Entering into this, you can go in and you can check your keypad just by going in and pressing each of the individual buttons and watching it light up, make sure that it, it does reflect the button that you're pressing so that you have the correct signal coming from the keypad to the controller. After you've tested it, just press 1 until it goes back to the test select mode. Display feature, what it does, it will test the display. The display board will beep, followed by a asterisk, then a, uh, a zero, followed by a decimal point. And it'll continue through this routine until you press button number 1 to get back to the display prompt. There are also relays in here, utilizing the, um, the test functions for the, uh, the energy conservation modes for the lights and the refrigeration system. That's accomplished through a series of relays that's in the AC box that's in the machine. And what you do is you're testing these relays. You're not actually testing the components that they go to, but the relays themselves. And you enter in, the first one that comes up is compressor, and use button number four to adjust that from a zero to a one, or one to a zero back and forth. While you're doing this, there'll be a clicking noise coming from the relay as it's opening and closing. You want to make sure that you have the compressor unplugged when you do this so you're not short cycling the compressor and causing it to start and stop again and start again under high head pressure. Fans, the same way, goes from a zero to a one, and then the lights doesn't hurt the lights to turn them off and turn them back on. And it goes back to compressor again. So you're testing those three components, the three re relays that operate those components being the compressor, the evaporator fan, and the, the light leads. It takes you back to test vent again, and from test vent you just uh, button one to go back to test mode, and that takes you out of the, the test feature. In this section, we're going to take just the configuration codes and discuss them. The configuration codes is a unique feature to the Coca-Cola programming. It allows you to uh, enter into that, and there's 10 different functions or configuration codes that you can set that allows you to turn certain functions on, turn them off so that you can have access to them or not even see them as you're scrolling through the menu. Configuration code 1 is a multi-price feature. The far right digit being a 1 or a 0 will indicate whether it's on or off. 1 indicating that multi-pricing is turned on, 0 would mean that it was off. Now if I wanted to change that, enter with button 4 and it makes that digit start flashing. Button number 2 or 3 will scroll between the 1 and just basically toggles it from, from 0 to the 1. 0 being off, 1 being on. Button 4 locks it in. When it's not flashing, it's been locked in. Scroll forward using button number two and it'll, it'll take me to configuration code two. Configuration code two turns on your optional features being uh, blocking uh, se selections, block setting on uh, blocking one and two, um, discount features and a few others and we'll see those as we go to them. Configuration code three will give you your scrolling message where it scrolls ice cold Coca-Cola. So we'll turn that one on. Okay, button number two taking you to configuration code four. This is your automatic viewing of cash and sale. What that does is with that activated with the one on there, it's turned on simply opening the service door. When the service switch on the door is opened, it will automatically say cash and historical number, sale and historical number. So it gives you those numbers automatically without having to enter into any of the routines. Configuration code five is uh, your automatic reset of the resettable portion of the cash and sale. You know, the buy column, buy selection numbers, those numbers are resettable. Turning that on, once I go into that routine, into the cash or sale routine, and those numbers are displayed at least one time across the display, 
closing the door resets those to zero, not the historical portion, just the resettable portion. Button two to go forward to configuration code six. Number six is not tied to anything at this point. It's reserved for future use. Button two will take you to configuration code seven. Configuration code seven will give you um, an option of changing how long it will save a credit. When it comes from the factory, it's set at zero. Uh, right now it's set at one. What that does, you've got your option between a five minute time limit to an indefinite time limit. So if it was on zero, if it was on zero like as it is now, what would happen is a person introduces their money, they set up a credit, they've met the VIN price, they uh, have a credit established on the vending machine. If there's no activity to the keypad for a period of five minutes, that credit becomes property of the vending machine. It, is, it's, um, it eats that credit. By changing it to a one, that holds it an indefinite time frame. So you know, once the credit is established, no activity to the keypad indefinitely, you know, it, it'll hold that, that credit until there is activity and, may, and a selection made. But number two will take you to configuration code eight. Configuration code eight is your mult or your um, configuration code eight is your force vent mode. Basically, what that means with force vent turned on, and as it is in this instance, once you meet the minimum vent price on the vending machine, if you've got multi pricing or, or single price mode, once you've met the the minimum vent price, you're locked into a vend. That's you know the meaning of force vend. Configuration code nine is multi vend. Multi vend allows you to make more than one selection off of a larger credit. Say you have a five dollar bill uh, inserted into the bill validator. If it is capable of accepting a five dollar note, displays a five dollar credit, and you can make multiple selections. You know, press A one and get a package, and it will deduct that uh, amount of that vend from your credit and go on and make another selection without having to reintroduce any more money. Once you're finished, if you have uh, configuration code nine turned on and you've had a multiple credit set up on there, once you're finished making your selections, pressing the return button, the coin return button will dispense any change that's due to the customer. Configuration code 10 is your bill escrow feature. Uh, as it comes from the factory, it's set with bill escrow off. It will not escrow any bills in the dollar bill validator. It takes it, stacks it automatically. If you wanted to escrow it and give them an option of getting out of a, a certain uh, transaction, once they put their money in, they notice that a certain uh, brand that they want isn't available, they can uh, press the reject button and get the dollar bill back as opposed to turning the vending machine into a dollar bill changer. With uh, C10 turned on, it will escrow it and, uh, and pay it back to you. With C10 turned off as it is now, it will stack it and any um, reject button pressed will give you four quarters back. Button one takes you back to C1, configuration code one, which takes you through the menu for the configuration codes. Button one to get out of it takes you back to the configuration code prompt. Change. This is a function for uh, adjusting the, the correct change message that goes across the display. If you do nothing at this prompt, as it's set from the vending machine, the coin tube status tells the controller when to activate the correct change mode message that goes across the front of the display. Uh, within this feature, if you enter into it, the very first prompt that comes up is con over with an X beside of it. Basically what that is, it gives you the function of a potential of consumer overpay. By entering into this and changing this to a one, what we've done, we've active, activated consumer overpay feature. Uh, Coca-Cola feels that there's been instances where they've lost sales because it was in correct change mode and the consumer only had a dollar. In their, in their hand, so they lost that sale. By doing this, it allows the consumer to put that dollar bill in. It's reading correct change only across the display. They know going into it, they insert the dollar bill, they can get that 85 cent or 90 cent vend and not get their change back possibly if the, if the correct change isn't in the vending machine. Once you set this, then you have to go in and tell it at what level of coinage do I want the board to uh, initiate the correct change message uh, so that you know it'll it'll come on say at a dollar fifty in coins as opposed to when you know the nickel tube you get low or you know you may want to set a higher standard so that you have a float of a set amount of tube uh, level 
and just enter into that and it comes up with a, a series of zeros and it's just going in and changing them at five cent increments until you get whatever value you want. And then the next one is accept. You've got the, um, the consumer overpay feature turned on. You don't want them to come up and put a $5 bill in and, and not get change for that $5 bill. What you would do here is have a maximum acceptance. You may not want them to put more than a uh, $2 value in or you know, maybe a dollar value, whatever you want, so that they're not putting a large amount in and not getting their change back. You limit that amount. But number one then goes back to the change prompt. Again, on this, if you do nothing in this mode, as it's set from the factory, the, the controller and the coin mech communicate, and the coin mech tells the controller when to initiate the correct change mode. The consumer will not uh, have an overpay capability. Preview. Uh, the internal passcode on uh, the Coke vending machine is 4231. Uh, most People at this point know that this is Coca-Cola's passcode and you can walk up and you can press the 4231 on an electronic vending machine and get the cash and sale data out of it. What uh, Coke is providing through this preview uh, feature is going in and changing the external passcode from 4231 to any other combination of that 4231 number. So you can go in and by entering it the 4 starts flashing and we can scroll to any number that we want between 0 and 4 and change that first digit to another, another number. And you can make these numbers as, as you enter that number in, then it'll change to the next digit will start flashing. And you can have these numbers as a route specific code or you know, a uh, customer specific code, but you're limited to the numbers of zero through four. Once you're finished, you can press button number, four, number one and uh, back out of it and go back to the preview prompt. Language feature. This is a feature most of you are familiar with. We, ha we have multiple language capabilities uh, as far as the consumer prompts that goes across vending, uh, out of order, um, correct change mode. Those type of things will, will go across in a specific language. When the machine is shipped out, it's shipped out on English. Now you can scroll to the different languages, French, German, Italian, Portuguese, Spanish, Slovenia, Finnish, Norwegian, and back to English again. So just entering it in, you know, when you get to the language you want, you know, lock it in with button number four and it'll automatically go back to the language prompt. Again, the only prompts that change, they go across the time feature. If you're going to be utilizing some of the timer features that we're going to discuss later, you must set the time. And, and also within this time feature there is the date. So we'll enter into this. And we want to enable it. He's asking that question, so we'll, button number four will be able to enable that. Zero is off, one is on. Button number two will take us into year, so we want to be able to adjust the year. And you can adjust it again using buttons one and two to go up, or, or buttons two or three to go up and down. It has a capability, I believe, of going uh, well into uh, like 2060, 2065, somewhere around there. So we're in good shape time wise lock the date in a year, then the next thing is month. We can change the month again using buttons two or three to scroll forward or backward. Lock that in with button four. Button two to go to day is uh, 15. Again, you can uh, scroll that forward or backward, enter it in, lock it in with button four. Then we get into the hour time frame. Adjusting, you'll notice that the first two digits to the left for the hours are flashing. You can adjust those up or down again with buttons two or three. Locking that in, it'll automatically cause the last two digits for the minutes to adjust, start flashing. Adjusting that, locking it in with button number four. DST is daylight savings time. When you enter into that, we have, it gives you the feature of daylight savings time, so you're not going out twice a year and adjusting the clock by an hour when you're in these schools with the timers. It comes from the factory set off, start scrolling with button two, it comes up with Australia, Europe, and North America. So that's what you want is in America is what comes up as North American for the United States. Enter that in, and it goes back to DST. Start scroll forward again, it just takes you back to enable, so we've gone through all of that. Button number one will take you back to the time prompt, which is the beginning of this feature.
the next function is lighting feature. This is a lighting energy conservation mode. Uh, Coca-Cola is initiating it with this uh, vending machine that you go in and turn off the, uh, the lights at certain times, put a timer on the lights so that you shut them off in office buildings where there's not going to be anybody during the evenings. So enter into it. Again, it's the enable comes up. If you want to enable that, you'll enter in, change that zero to a one, lock it in, changes it back to an X. Then we go in, we have a start time. On that start time, there's a start day. Just keep entering it with button four. And then you can scroll to the days of the week that you want this feature to start. Now there's an every day that you can go into that and just change that to a one. And that's so if you turn this feature on every day. Button two, we get, now we're going to do the start hour, so we're going to tell it when to do this. This is military timing. Any of our timers on the vending machine are set in 24-hour military time mode. So button number two to change to, to the hours. You'll notice that the lights went off when I reached the hour we're, that we're in. Let me scroll back. say at 1500, say at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And then the minutes starts flashing so we can change that to you know, individual minutes within that hour. Then we get the, the um, back to start day again. Then we have a, start, a stop time. We have to tell it what time to stop and what days of the week that we don't want it to, or we want it to stop at these particular times. So just keep entering in and go again to every day. And then we can tell it the hour that we want it to stop this on. So we want to go to Let's say it, um, at 7 a.m., somebody starts showing up, then the lights will come back on. And we've got out of that and the lights came back on because it's not in that time feature. We go back to the lighting prompt. Now the next feature is refrigeration feature. It does the exact same thing. You can do the uh, adjusting of the refrigeration uh, compressor will shut down at uh, certain times of the day. Same thing, it may coincide with the timing with the lights as well. And it's just enter in. We won't go into uh, all the, the individuals because it does exactly the same way. You enable it and you have a start, a start time and within that start time is the day and the hours. You have a stop time which is the day and the hours again. And then also beyond this, because we're, we're using the electronic controls and temperature sensors, is the adjustments for that within the programming. Degrees comes up. Now, what this is for, so if you're displaying uh, the degrees, the temperature of the vending machine across the front of the machine, you have the option of Fahrenheit or Celsius, you know, represented by an F or a C. Lock that in. Scroll to the next one. Set point is set from the factory at 35 degrees. That is the set point, the same as adjusting the knob on a, on a manual type. You're going to tell it at 35 degrees this is the temperature we want to start reading and we shut the, com the compressor down so the refrigeration system isn't running and won't get too cold. 35 degrees seems to be a good standard point for us and that's where it comes from the factory. To adjust that, you enter into that and you can adjust it and the range to adjust it is 41 to 32. But we'll lock it back in at 35. The next feature within that is storage and it's the storage uh, area inside the machine for um, if you're using the energy conservation mode, you want the machine to shut down and save energy in the office building or wherever you are, you know, in those hours you have it shut down, but you don't want your drinks to get too hot. From the factory, it's set at 60 degrees, and you can adjust that the same way you did the set point, just using buttons two or three, run that up or down to a, a different setting that you want it on. The idea here is so that when it's shut down overnight, that it's not sitting there and the drink's getting hot and having to start a, a, a major cool down function first thing in the morning when it starts back up. And the next feature is display. Now what this does is it tells it that I want to display the temperature of the drink after the scrolling message uh, that says Coke, ice cold Coca-Cola, then it'll say whatever the temperature is inside of the machine. This is the selection blocking feature. This is the, the vending machine's timer for shutting off certain selections in schools as they're required to in so many cases. Enter into it, it comes up selection block one. Enter in and it gives you the enable uh, prompt. Pressing button number four, we 
set that to a 1 to enable this feature. And then button number 2 is your start time. So you enter in, you've got to tell it what time you want, want it to, um, to start this feature. And the first thing that comes up in that is the start day. So you enter in and you can scroll from you know, the individual days if you're only going to be working with certain days of the week or in many cases just for ease of it, uh, you just go to every day and uh, turn that to a one. And it's just, you know, again, the one means that feature will be uh, activated on that particular day. Or you can scroll to the individual days and change that to, you know, certain ones that you just want to turn off as well. Lock that in, takes you back to start day, and then button number two will move you forward to the start hour. This is where you're going to adjust the time then, telling it what time I want this feature that shuts off the selections to start. By entering into it, the uh, two zeros to the left start blinking for the hours. So again, it's military time, so we're going to scroll forward. We're going to choose an, a, a simple time of uh, 0700, is basically is what's on, on here right now, which is 7 o'clock in the morning. Enter in the, the minutes, zero starts flashing, and we're going to change and we can scroll forward to um, whatever time within that 7 o'clock hour that you want to do. And we'll just stop it at 7.15. Lock it in by pressing button 4. It goes back to start hour. And it'll go back to start day. So we can scroll or take back with button 1 to the start time prompt. Move forward with button 2 and it goes to the stop time. So it's going to work just like it did with the start time. So stop time, we want to tell it what days. Uh, we want it to be activated, and again, we just go to the every day again, or we can go to the individual days, but we'll go to every day, turn that on with uh, one, and then go to the stop hour. And this is what time you want this feature to stop, which will allow them to start selecting those, those selections again. So we adjust those hours. We go on up to this 3 o'clock in the afternoon, which is going to be 1,500 hours. Lock that in. We're not going to adjust the minutes. So we've got the stop hour, stop day, stop hours set. And that was selection blocking. Um, also within that, enter back in here, is um, the selections. Now we've got the start time, stop time, and now we're going to tell it what selections. And again, you've got 45 selections in here. And uh, we can do all selections just by pressing button number Three, it took me backwards to the tail end of that is all selections, so I can shut off all 45 selections. And again, just by, by entering into that, and we change that zero to a, to a one, get it flashing, change it to a one, lock it in, and then you can go to the individuals that, like the juices and the waters that you can, uh, you can sell during those time frames that aren't regulated, and uh, turn those back on. It would be a lot easier than going in and turning off all of the carbonated selections individually. And then we have the lighting feature so that during those time frames if you want, if you're shutting off the entire machine as opposed to individual selections and you want the lights to shut off at the same time, you can go in and adjust that so that uh, on that timer feature when it shuts those drinks off it also shuts the lights off. And we go back into selection blocking one. Now, selection blocking two is a feature that uh, will give you a second time frame within the same day. Because you're working, when you're working with this, you work between midnight to midnight. You have a 24 hour slot that you're working in. So you may want to do a situation where selection blocking one would be the morning hours. During the lunchtime, they're allowed to uh, purchase those drinks. And then you go into selection blocking two, and you would have an afternoon hour, you know, say from uh, 1230 to 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So you could use selection blocking two the exact same way you did selection blocking one. Enter in, enable, follow the same procedures as we did for selection blocking one. This next function is discount pricing. Uh, entering into that, what this allows you to do is set a discount price on uh, certain selections or the entire machine. Again, first of all, when you enter in with button 4, it gives you the, the uh, option of enabling this feature. Once you have it enabled, again, you have a start time. So we enter in, and within that start time, you have a start day. We're just going to go ahead and set every day. Um, or you can have individual days, again. Uh, you say you just want to do it on Friday afternoons or you can do it every day. Uh, after setting that day, 
Then we have the hours, and this sets exactly like uh, your selection blocking. So you have your, your hour that you want to do it on, let's say, uh, discount pricing at, um, at 4 o'clock in the afternoon which would be 1,600 hours. And then you're going to have a stop time. This is what time you want to stop this feature. So we enter in, we have the stop day, and we're just going to go to every day and have that on. Lock that in. Then we go to the stop hour. We have that set at 16.15, so we gave them a 15-minute time break for the, the discount feature and just you know adjusting the hours and the minutes as we have in the past. And then we have the selections, and this is where you scroll to the individual selections you want to have that discount on. You may want to do uh, button number three, and it'll take you to all selections, and you discount all 45 selections. Or you can use button number two to scroll forward to individual selections that you want to have on a discount price. And again, it's just by entering into that, putting it on a one, and then uh, locking it in. Then you have the less amount. This is um, the price that you're going to put in here that you want it to reduce the VIN price by. So if we're selling it for a dollar, and I want to reduce it, uh, the, the entire machine selling for one VIN price is at a dollar and I want to reduce it by five cents, what I put in is that value of that is going to be five cents. You don't want to put your end result VIN price in here because what you do is you end up reducing it by that amount. So if I want to reduce it by five cents and I put uh, 95 cents in here, then it would reduce 95 cents instead of five cents. So you want to just put the VIN price that you want to reduce it by in here. So it subtracts that amount from the VIN price. And that takes us back to the enable, which is the beginning of this feature, and that concludes the discount feature. This next feature is the override feature that enables you to go in and, for service purposes, override some of the timer features like the refrigeration or lighting or selection blocking or free VIN mode or different things like that. What we do, we enter into it, and again, it'll come up and it'll say, free, this is the free VIN, we want to override the free VIN mode, then you just change that zero to a one. Lock it in, come out. The next one is a no VIN, you know, same thing, you're just, you're just scrolling in, changing what you want to change over to, a, um, to override when the override feature is activated. Blocking, we want to override that, and discount pricing, the lighting, refrigeration, and it goes back to free bin. Just by going in and changing each one of those that you want to be able to override when you go to do a service call, then you just activate it, the one, changing a zero to a one, locking it in, then back out of it. The next feature is the remote Venmec. This is for some development uh, controls that are coming about that we're using a satellite device. Uh, it can initiate a remote VIN feature so that it can give away uh, free credit drinks uh, remotely from a, a satellite device and once this is programmed in. From remote Venmec, press button number two to go to the next feature which is grab mode. Grab mode simply gives you the option of turning on a security feature. The grab mode when turned on recognizes a VIN from the solenoid firing. When the solenoid fires it cancels the credit. If you don't activate this then the machine nor works normally. It is when you make a van, the drink is, uh, is vended onto the conveyor, comes out the delivery door. Once it comes out the delivery door, then it would cancel the credit. To activate this, press button number four to enter into it. Four again to give you the option. Now normally when it comes from the factory, it's, it's going to be set in the inactive mode, which is the machine's in normal operation mode. It's going to cancel the credit on the delivery into the delivery port. To change it, press button two or three to change the zero to a one, four to lock it in. With it locked in and enabled, what it does at that point then, as soon as it senses a vend at uh, the solenoid, it cancels the credit, giving you a higher security. Button number one to exit out of that, button two to move forward to return, which is the end of the programming features. And by pressing button number four, it takes you out of the uh, programming feature and it goes back into normal operating mode. I trust you found this video useful. Be sure to check out the rest of our videos in the link in this video's description.